right, so. All right, Jess, well, we get going and the girls jump on when they need to jump on, but um, welcome, welcome to our uh, little online forum here in South Australia. Obviously, uh, I know you were on as a listener with uh, Lane and Alicia when we had the first one on, which was great um, for you to be part of, but uh, it's great to have you on um, talking about your journey a little bit to the girls. Uh, obviously, it's been a it's been a, an eventful one. Um, just before we get going, this, so some of the girls, um, I guess, put a face to a name. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here and play a little video uh, for you, Jess. And now uh, we'll come, we'll come back, we'll come back to you. So um, here we go. Where are we? Well, guys, congratulations through to the second round of the Australian Open. Ash, did you want to start? You wanted to um, maybe talk a little bit about Jess over here? I do. Um, I mean, a lot of you may not know, but um, Jess is finishing up after the Australian Open here, and I think it was really exciting for me to be able to share this moment with her. Um, Jess got me back into this sport. She was my first partner when I came back a few years ago now, so this is a really special moment for her, and I just would like her if she's keen to, to have a chat and, and uh, enjoy this moment in front of this beautiful crowd. Jessica, uh, kind, yeah. come over here, come over here, oh. don't walk away. There's some, some kind words there from the world number one, so you're wrapping up after the Australian Open, is that right? Yeah, um, I didn't quite know whether to say anything or not, but it's sort of come out and I really pre appreciate Ash's kind words. Um, you know, it's an absolute pleasure to share the court with her. Obviously, would prefer as a partner, but um, no, she's an unreal chick, and it's unbelievable to have someone like her to, for us to look up to. And you know, I'm really grateful that this this is my last, you know, moment. I've got mixed doubles, but um, you know, it's a real pleasure to be able to finish here in Melbourne. How special is it? Yeah, round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. For you, Jess, I mean, how special is it to play? in front of a packed crowd here in Melbourne or Melbourne Arena to, to wrap up. Obviously, you've got more tennis to go, but not a bad crowd to play in front of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't want to steal the win from these guys, but, um, yeah, this was the first court I played on, like, 12 years ago. So it's pretty cool to come back and to be able to play, you know, again and be on the court with number one and, obviously, two unbelievable players and um, two unbelievable athletes in the game. So... I'm really grateful that, you know, there's such a great crowd and obviously um, hopefully these guys can keep going and keep winning. Well said. Well, thank you. We'll speak to our winners, Jessica Moore, ladies and gentlemen, and Astra Sharma, of course. We'll see them again soon. Guys, let's talk about you two if we can. It seems like you have a lot of fun there on the court. Is that how it works for you two? Uh, definitely. I think it's all about fun. That's um, what we are always having and we have a great time off the court, on the court, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, to extend on that, it's, it's, this is what this sport's about. It's a game. We love playing. It's, it's our passion. We love it. Uh, and there's, there's nothing better than coming out with, with your mate and, um, you know, playing tennis, playing this beautiful sport. I think you've known each other for around 10 years. Is that right? You said that's me the other day, around 10? Kind of eight, nine years. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Good that you <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's been a long time. Hey, can I ask you then, what's your favourite thing about Ash Barty? Just being Ash. That's it. Because, um, no, she's, uh, she's definitely a great human being. I love her family as well, and uh, we always have a great time. But I think it's not all about tennis. It's more about the relationship you have off the court, and that's much more worth it than tennis sometimes. Ash, your favourite thing about Yuli before... Oh, it's very kind of her. I think she could have stitched me up very easily then, but um, no, I think... It's the same thing. I, I enjoy spending time with um, Yule as a person and her team. It's, you know, it's the relationships off the court that you build, the friendships that you build off the court um, that, are, that are more important when playing tennis sometimes. Well said. We'll see you both in round two of the doubles. Yulia Gerges and Ash Barty. Oh, all right. Jess. Get rid of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. so awesome. You there? Yeah. 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty awesome, uh, I guess, send off there, I guess, just, uh, just, just looking at your history and, and going into a little bit of uh, detail on your career, you won two, two WTA doubles titles in your career. You won four ITF singles titles uh, on the ITF stage and then 31 ITF doubles titles. That'd be right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's what it says. Yeah. That's all right. And then, and then you know, from the junior perspective, um, made made the Australian Open uh, junior final, and also won Wimbledon and Roland Garros doubles juniors. Yep. You're gonna agree. You, you're gonna agree with me on that, or? I'll agree with you. Yep. <laughs> And, yeah. and from a ranking point of view, thanks, just thanks for sharing. 2008, your highest singles ranking was 132, and doubles. I think from last year, your highest doubles ranking was 52. So, uh, also getting to represent your country playing Fed Cup. So, pretty, uh, pretty awesome career and, and journey that you've had. Just tell us, just when you when you watch that video there, did, you know, and being around Ash and even some of the messages from both the girls, you know, there and from yourself, and then playing with another Aussie who the girls heard from last week, you know, Astra, you know, her journey was a bit different than yours, and teaming up with her and getting to play that match. But just share us a little bit, you know, your thoughts in that, you know, at that moment and playing that match, and and then hearing, you know, the words of Ash. Yeah, all right. well, thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, it makes – I get so pumped, actually, watching it. But um, it was really unexpected and completely – yeah, it was a really nice gesture of her, and she definitely didn't have to do it and was completely off her own bat. But um, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to sort of approach um, retiring. I, um, I would say I'm quite an introvert, and um, – I think, yeah, I wasn't quite sure whether to tell anyone or if it was going to have an effect or, yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure. I hadn't got that around my head and um, I mentioned it to a coach and he somehow um, spoke to a news presenter, uh, like a journalist, and who then spoke to Ash and I wasn't aware um, of that. So went that day. It was, I was, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a shock to the system, but um, completely grateful and, um, yeah, part of me sort of thinks, you know, I, I regret not maybe telling more people, but at the time I sort of wanted to go, you know, um, give my last train open, you know, a crack and not really have that in my mind and, but at the same time, super grateful of the way that it turned out. Um, with Ash on, on that day. Um, but, yeah, and I think it was a really good message of how she spoke about friendships because, you know, it's something that's pretty challenging on the tour at times. But um, I was really fortunate to be able to play with Astra because, you know, that we decided that we really wanted to play together because we, you know, love each other as people, not just as tennis players. And I think at the end of the day that's um, pretty important. Yeah, so what a way to finish with, you know, a good mate. I mean, I know you had to play against, you know, a good mate, Nash, as well, but uh, just a great way to finish up. I know you, you know, went on um, and played mix, but but uh, but I guess, you know, some of the girls that don't know you in South Australia, you, know, you do have some ties here because you did, you did come here a fair bit, I know, for a few years. Um, you know, you've got a couple of former coaches on, Tonight, you know, you had you worked with Milo over in WA. You know, you had you had to deal with me for a couple of years, and then you came to South Australia and, and did some work with Rowan when he was here, uh, and and sort of knew the, I guess, the ropes of, um, uh, you know, of of South Australia and Adelaide, and and some of the younger girls at that stage 
uh, got got to do you know some work with you when you were here. Uh, what was that like for you visiting you know being around you know the NA in, in Adelaide and, and your time here that you did spend in Adelaide? Yeah, look, over my career, I've been really fortunate to, um, with the coaches that I, you know, got to work with. Um, uh, when I came to Adelaide, I actually took a year off. Um, so I was 20, 21, um, and I decided I needed a break and I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to come back. And um, Fish, Ron Fisher, um yeah, sort of opened his, uh, you know, arms a little bit and I sort of came to Adelaide, um, actually stayed with Dora um, and her family. Um, that would have been, that would have been, Milo and... That would have been an interesting time, having to spend all that time with Dora. <laughs> yeah, that's for another call. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, look, um, Obviously, this period for me, just being recently retired, but also, I guess, with what's going on at the moment with COVID-19, has given me the opportunity to really start to reflect. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it was a couple of years that I spent in Adelaide and uh, the coaches and the staff there really took me, um, you know, with open arms. And I'm, I'm not an SA athlete, so that was pretty amazing pretty amazing that you know they gave me the opportunity to train in Adelaide and um, I, I love Adelaide and I, I it's, it reminds me a bit of Perth and I, I just love how it's uh, it's like a big country town um, but I, I really enjoyed and I am really grateful for the opportunity to be able to work you know with coaches that I have in previously um, but yeah I think what I think the environment of a training environment is all about the people and I'm really grateful for what they they sort of offered for me in my journey. Yeah, great. Great. Well, I guess let, let's talk a little bit about your journey. Um, if, if we go back and I guess that, that that's when you did turn pro to 2008, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, professional. Um, you, you sort of our best junior at that stage, um, you know, make a final of the Australian Open Juniors and um, getting opportunities. I know, uh, you know, where we had the reciprocal wild cards, you know, with with the US Open as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, out of juniors where, um, you know, you've worked really hard, you, you, you know, you're um, starting to, I guess, make your mark on the juniors and, and just that initial year of transition, because it was a pretty big year uh, of, of traveling and, and playing the, I guess, the, the junior slams, which was an awesome opportunity. Tell us a little bit about, you know, reflecting back on, 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 that, on that sort of journey at that stage. Yeah, 2008 was a massive year for me. Um, I think the transition personally was really quick. Um, which was a good and maybe um, challenging part in itself. Um, so I was playing the Junior Slams, but I was also playing, um, you know, ITF, um, women's ITF at that point as well. And I think, you know, the odd WTA qualifying as well. So it was kind of um, very mesh-like and I... I played all the Grand Slams in, in the juniors and at the same time I also played, you know, the seniors um, in at the Australian Open and the US Open, like you said. So it all happened extremely quick and I, reflecting back, I possibly didn't have the skill set that I would um, have liked to have had, but at the same time that was just how it unfolded for me and um, some of the memories I have from playing that Australian Open that year, I won around um, in the seniors and then made um, the final of the juniors that same year. And it was a massive, massive couple of weeks. But, you know, something that I uh, remember really fondly, I remember the final being on Australia Day on Margaret Court and, um, yeah, it was a great match. And, yeah, they're, they're memories that I'm going to have for a lifetime. And, and I know in that... Uh, you actually beat Simona Halep in the semis to make the finals. So pretty, 
pretty good feather in your cap. Yeah, pity I didn't have her career afterwards, though. <laughs> but, but no, um, it's a, it was a really weird couple of weeks for me because if I think back to certain moments, I can't, I can't even, um, I can't even sort of tell you what really happened because I think I was in such a, a space, or I guess they call it the zone, but I was in such a space where it was just autopilot and. I can't even remember how I performed or played. I remember the court against Samoa Hellop, but I can't even. It just, it just was on a flow effect, and I, was, yeah. So, it's a weird one because it's one that I really think about, you know, quite a bit now. But details is is hard for me to, it's hard for me to um, talk about. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, look, that's probably another call because I could probably. Give you some more details on, on those. Matches, <laughs> I'm uh, sure you I, could. I won't do that to you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, look. So you know, from from um, again, what we're trying to focus on with the girls is that that level of you know the consistency, the organisation, education on um, you know, I guess with your priorities and and where things were at. Looking back at at that time, you know, priorities and goal setting. And um, I know um, at that time, as far as a lot of those things and you ticking the boxes, you, you did a, a very, very good job in, in that space, uh, you know, and, and that carried through in your senior career. Uh, you know, you never, you know, all, when you're out training, you always put in a big effort training, you know, all those things, those little, I guess, those, that take no talent, as we we like to say, the little one percent, as you you were fantastic at. Uh, you know, was that something that was that that was your personality? Was that something that you just believed that you had to do to to get where you wanted to get to? Uh, I think it was a combination. Um, yeah, partly my personality, but also. Um, uh, working with Milo early on, um, I think you know I have a lot to, to thank in, in that regard. He taught, he gave a real foundation of what hard work meant and um, commitment. And um, you know, I I knew that I needed to make sacrifice. Um, you know, but in saying that, you know, there was areas that for sure I, I still needed to work on. But I I definitely th looking back, pride myself on giving it everything I had and, um, you know, I always tried to tick, so to speak, tried to tick the boxes and, and, and do the, everything I could or everything I believed I could at the time in becoming a better player. Yeah. And what, so what do you think in that time, you know, when, when you did start making the transition and that first year you did, did quite well? All of a sudden that you're out there, where, where where do you think, I guess you talked about maturity and, and, and having some different skill sets, where, where do you think some of those things you could have done, you, well, you, you wish you might have had those skill sets, what, what's, what were some of those things that you spoke about? That you think I could have done better? Yeah. Is that what you're trying? Yeah. Oh. Um. Look, I could speak for a while. <laughs> um, I think, this, yeah, when I when I reflect, I definitely um, I'm very easy to to discuss or talk about what I could do better. Um, and one of those things I really wish I was a little bit more self compassionate. Um, I was very easy to be self critical of myself and my performance. Um, and I found it really difficult um, to separate, and it's something that I had to learn, and I can still continue to learn, is that how my performance was as a tennis player didn't define me as who I um, am as a person. And, um, you know, that's something that I really, um, yeah, sort of, even when I was on the on a trip just recently with Charlotte and Olivia, 
and um, it was something that I tried to get push put my message across is that you know what you do doesn't define who you are and that was something that I really struggled with um, very much in that sort of transition period was because that's all I knew at the time and and I understandably I invested you know my whole self into you know achieving of being a you know a great tennis player and sometimes I lost track of you know um that you know sometimes you are going to have some losses which is inevitable and you know I take them a little bit personally but um yeah I, I guess that's one of if I got to speak to my younger self that would be one um pointer that I'd really try to encourage so if if you were to look at I guess the uh the, the athlete pie chart back you know at, at that time that that definitely would yeah. be, you know, that would be your your well being component, uh, I guess, in the sense of, um, in, in your mindset and your psych- psychological skills. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, and self care, self care, yeah. Yeah. So as a junior, like, were you just you you wouldn't have been really too concerned about? Um, I mean, I know you did. You you were good at you sort of warm ups and recoveries, but uh that wouldn't have been a, a huge priority for you whereas you move forward a few years later and starting to to gain those skill sets well this pie chart would would definitely have changed yeah absolutely i think the older you get um you know you get a broader perspective of what's important and your values um and i think you know you you get to know yourself better as a person. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I was great at doing the warm ups, the cool downs, the mobility, um, you know, the strength sessions, getting the time on court. I probably, I was unaware, I would say, or I didn't, yeah, I was unaware of how important the mind is and self care. Yeah. I mean, as we talk and talk the kids through a lot of it, I mean, the importance of, um, you know, I think you remember the conversation, with, you know, that we had with Lane and and um, and Alicia, just just having that different sort of team uh, around you and, and those people that uh, can help you, I guess, in that journey. So now we talk about the national academies and and, and the team that all the girls have around them through the National Academy, whether it's our sports psych and Emma, you know, now we've got Matt here with our strength and conditioning. Um, we've got Emily, who's our nutritionist. So, so really, the, the girls have this great team around them that uh, as we are going through this and a lot of what we're trying to do is get the girls to ask those those questions, those important questions, so to, to learn. Um, and try and get that skill set a little bit earlier of what needs to happen to try and get to that next level of being an athlete as also as an individual. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, being Australian, we're so fortunate in the sense of what um, resources are offered to us. And at the end of the day, it comes down to you and, you know, you're your driver of, of you know the outcome and really utilize what is there and there is one thing I'd encourage is there is no silly question I I would just ask away because if there's something there that you know is concerning you or you're wanting you know you can't quite get the answer for ask because um you know I think that's how how you'll grow yeah right and so just just talking we a little bit post post now. I know you mentioned there that you took the trip away with with the girls, which which was a great experience for you. And I know me talking to you and and getting you to come on and talk to the girls. That's something that you're pretty passionate about. Uh, tell us a little bit how you found, I guess, sitting, you know, in a mentor role in a sense, and also a little bit of coaching. Yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I mean challenging it was um the 
challenging in the sense because I I know how difficult it is for a player to um, have a new coach that they've never spent time with before, and you you're competing. So it's not a time for changing things, you know, and it's not my place because, you know, um, I haven't been along on that journey. But I was very much trying to focus on, um, you know, being there for them, um, you know, uh, seeing what they had as a game and how they were able to compete under, you know, so many challenging and um, circumstances that that was, um, you know, that that they were put under in Asia. Um, unfortunately, it was cut short, um, obviously, with everything going on. But I, it was a great experience for me, and I really hope that I was able to, you know, pass on um, my experience in a way that wasn't confronting or um, I was very much trying to sort of be there as a support. Um, but, yeah, I, I loved it, and I really hope that um, Charlotte and Olivia got, got something out of it. No, uh, from from what uh, Charlotte brought home, she she really enjoyed the time with you. I think it was I think it was great to to have a someone that's newly off that off the circuit and and gone through some of those things uh, for the young girls to have you around is fantastic. So um, good job. But so maybe just a little bit. I know there's a few we've got you know a few of us on and with the girls. Um, I have asked them to, you know, and if I have to put them on the spot, I will put them on the spot to ask ask you a question. But, um, or maybe we can get Dora to, to you know, to, to start the line of questioning right, and Dora see what she can come up with. <laughs> so I'll open it up if you want to Fire put it in the chat, chat okay. box or, or just ask, ask straight away. Yes. Out of all the places you ever stayed, with people around the world, where's your favourite place? Go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, trick question. Um, no, one thing I'll probably um, just say is that obviously you've um, in the last you've you've been studying while you were on the tour as well, and um, you obviously ho hold education quite high on top of tennis. Um, so what is it, what are you currently doing now and um, where do you kind of see yourself ending up with what you're studying? Well, um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I was able to maintain my school um, while, I, while I was playing. You know, I obviously was just chipping away quite slowly. Um, but I'm at the point now where I only have a couple of units left. So, um, you know, um, yeah, I should, I'll be finished by the end of this year. Um, I'm also doing my – or doing the junior development coaching course, which starts next week. I'm pretty excited about that because I've never had – you know, I've never worked with younger players or players, you know, at um, a beginning – sort of level so I'm really looking forward to you know how to approach that effectively and um, learning about communicating with younger athletes um, I think that would be really cool um, I'm involved with a program that I joined when I knew that I was going to retire which is pretty much um, along the lines of transitioning out of sport um, it's called the athlete agency uh, and um, it's been actually really great because I've been able to link up with some mentors and it's just given me, a, a, I think, a, somewhere that I can you know, talk the challenges that come up with transitioning out of sport. Um, but, yeah, I'm just trying to keep really busy, as most people are at the moment. Um, I've been in Melbourne in my apartment for the last month um, <laughs> and um, I'm – actually looking to move to Sydney in a couple of weeks, which is a bit of a, an adventure in, its, in, adventure in itself. So, um, yeah, look, my personality is very much wanting to, you know, stay on top of things and looking at ways that I can improve myself and sort of dive into things. But at the same time, it's a little bit of a different experience for me because 
I'm able to sort of slow down a little bit and um, reflect and, you know, I'm not needing to travel and um, I'm able to spend, well, I was hoping to spend some time with family, but unfortunately that hasn't been at the moment. But, um, yeah, it's a different time for me, but I'm actually really enjoying the fact that I have time to sort of uh, slow down a little bit and, and reflect. Can I just ask one more question in regard to that, Jess? Would you, so like say if you've got an athlete that's kind of, you know, they're on the tour and they obviously, you know, they're not at the highest point as at where they can be, would you? Would your suggestion be to look down that pathway of, um, you know, uh, studying while they're on tour or at least like, you know, how you chipped away at it, would, you, would that be a suggestion of yours? Yeah, absolutely. Um... Simon Newell actually today got me to do a little exercise and um, it was really good because it, it made me reflect a little bit and um, so I I spoke a little about about education and um, I just personally, I'm only speaking from my personal opinion, but having something outside of playing, having a focus outside of being a tennis player, um, I for sure would not have been able to have continue my career as long as I did because it gave me a focus and a sense of value I think outside of playing and um, gave me another I don't know identity I suppose um, and I can, on, can only say that it would have nothing but a positive effect on your playing career that's my personal opinion because you know you, you're living and breathing tennis so much and when you're on the road you have so much downtime um, why not use it in a positive way? Cool. I'm done. I'll let somebody else take the mic. <laughs> we can have this conversation. I hope that answered it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Good, Jess. Thanks. Milo, you got something for Jess? I think I've discussed all my issues with Jess over the years. So it's difficult with a lot of the questions. Um, I guess, Jess, you've, it's, you've been all over the world and everything, and it's easy to pick one spot or any one incident. What would you say was the most challenging situation you had as a junior now, not as a senior, um, when you first started traveling? Because you have been to quite a few different places, a few different situations, and good, bad, ugly. Um, where would have been the best and where would have been the worst? The first place that came to my mind then was when we went to Reunion Island. Do you remember that trip? That's pretty bad. <laughs> that was a that was an eye opener for me. Um that was a challenge. Um yeah, seeing the barbed wire fences around the courts and you know, stay in accommodation that didn't have locks and all that sort of stuff. Um, that was that was an experience. Um, junior, that's a tough one because uh, I'm a homebody and I love Australia. <laughs> so for me, um, Australia's where it's at. But yeah, the the toughest that was probably up there as one of my toughest um, confronting trips. So yeah, Milo, but, but take let, it. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's let's go as far as best goes. I mean, we know Australia is it for all of us, but if you had to say um, a place that you enjoyed going to, you always look forward to going to it, like Asia, to Europe, or America, Canada. You know, all those different places where someone you knew, where you, there's people you in the end you made friends, people were welcoming outside of Australia, basically, that you said, well, geez, I'm going to go back there. I've got to put that on the calendar. Um, I always enjoy playing in Asia because I loved the heat and the conditions, but I would say Vancouver would be my favourite. Um, I developed a friendship with a family who I was able to stay with. Um, I had good results there. The culture, I felt, was pretty similar to ours. Um, beautiful city yeah it was somewhere that 
I really enjoyed. I knew that if there was a tournament there, I was going to play there. And I knew that, you know, if you go somewhere that you do enjoy and you, you've had a good experience, you tend to do well. Yeah. So therefore, as a but as a junior in those younger days, did you get homesick at any stage? Um, you know, like you, you really loved home in, in Australia and you were from a small area of Western Australia and stuff and you had to do a lot of traveling just to train when you were young. So was there, I mean, you you did get homesick out there like most juniors do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, as you know, I left home, so to speak. I went to boarding school at 12, 13. Um, and then from there, I pretty much was traveling full time. So um, I think I got pretty used to it in a sense when I was younger, but you never really get completely used to it. Like I get, got homesick at times when I was in my mid-20s. So, um, but I was fortunate in the sense that I had a family that I, I was close to um, and that I really touched based a lot with them and I found ways, I guess, to deal with it in – as well as I could, but as a junior, you're still figuring yourself out, um, and yeah, it's not easy. And I think anyone who feels that that's listening, um, it's totally okay and it's normal, and <laughs> we all feel it. Um, but all I could say um, in terms of um, you know my advice would just be. Uh, reach out to those who you trust and that give comfort and, um, you know, you're doing your best that you can and you just got to reinforce that you're doing the best that you can. And you're in isolation and those um, three bottles of wine up by the microwave, um, you know, you have you, you <laughs> haven't even talked with it. <laughs> no, they're full. You know I don't drink, Milo. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you alone. It's not as – it's not – it's not as fun drinking alone. Fair enough. Ask me how many bottles you finished in isolation. Um, any of the girls got any questions for Jess that are on at the, tonight? You girls want to either put something in the chat box or ask Jess anything you can think of? Now's your time. Have we got many girls with us? I can't see. Uh, there's a few, yeah. Um, but yeah, a few, and there's a few out still training. So. Um, I just, um, my name's Em. I'm the sports psych with the girls. Uh, I had a quick question for you uh, around what you mentioned about self compassion instead of being self critical, uh, and how that as a younger player you weren't always aware of that self care and that uh, the, the mental side of, of the game. What did you do to help you develop some of that self-compassion and be probably, I, I personally word it in, you have to be, you have to question because that's how you get better, continuous learning and that education is super important to be reflective. But how did you take it from being critical to compassionate? Hi, Emma. Um, yeah, it took a long time, um, not going to lie. Uh I think I developed um, a couple of um, key things in my routine that, um, such as yoga and meditation. And I always, for me, and I still do now today, those two things are critical. And I use them as tools, um, I guess as part of self-compassion, I um, just to check in with myself, um, separate myself from when I was on tour, I uh, stepped as a as a chance to separate from the tour life. Um, found it could be quite um, exhausting at times, fast paced, um, easy to get caught up in comparison and results and all that sort of thing. So I found um, these two tools, so to speak, really useful for me um, and still do. And, uh, yeah, because naturally I am extremely self-critical, as um, most as a lot of people know, but 
this was this just allowed me to you know say it's okay and um yeah just to check in with myself awesome thanks for sharing yeah well it doesn't look like the girls are gonna sure. cough up anymore jess but um they're all scared uh, yeah I don't know if they're scared. They're just yeah. But anyhow, my my thing. I, I got one more for you. <laughs> is um, you know, a little bit. We the last meeting uh, that we had, we uh, sort of presented on pathways, and uh, as we know, there's just you know to the sport, and you know your doubles partner at the AO, her pathway uh, was a was a different one um, coming from WA as well. Uh, I know she's a little bit younger than you, but I guess going through that, the the, the U.S. and college journey, and Astra spoke about that, that she wouldn't probably have gotten to where she was, uh, where she's currently at uh, in the, without the, the, the college system. When you were sort of coming out, you know, and, and touted as, a, you know, as, a, as our best junior, uh, were, were there things that you thought about is like, well, Am I am I making the right decision here to to turn pro? What what are my other options? Or were they something that you just didn't really look at? This is this was the journey. Like okay, I'm I'm out of juniors. I'm already playing pro circuits here. I'm I'm going along okay. I'm let let's go. Here we go. Uh, but I just want to get your thoughts on where you were at in that in the pathway sort sort of um journey but also now that you know that there's so many different options and how tough the circuit is uh, if you were to give some advice on that uh for for our girls what what sort of advice would you give them yeah um if i think back to when i was sort of 16 17 18 it wasn't really an option for me well it wasn't really um yeah it wasn't there for me at that time so for me it was very much transitioning straight away and that's all i saw at the time um but from my understanding the opportunity within college tennis now is just amazing um look i i think if you can take that pathway and and you believe it's right for you, I, I just the getting a degree at the same time as having the opportunity to train in an environment <coughs> with you know a lot of like-minded people um, and the potential of getting a scholarship, I just think there's so many opportunities there that you know could be incredible for you. But again, that's not for everyone um, and. I didn't take that path, um, but from my understanding with Astra, that was an amazing journey for her, and she has memories that she loved. And um, um, so I think it's an option definitely to consider. I, I from it's grown immensely in the last ten years, and I think yeah, the opportunities that can come out of it are huge. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe that there's uh, there's a one way or there's a right way either. I think everyone is unique, and yeah, there's many ways you can go about it. Yeah. Well, Jess, yeah, if, the, if no one else has got any uh, other questions, really appreciate your time tonight, Jess, and talking about your <laughs> your journey and still continues. Uh, we're moving. I know you said you're moving up to Sydney and uh, going to get involved in uh, some tennis up there as well, I'm sure, and keep educating yourself. Uh, I guess that never stops. So I uh, really appreciate you, your time and, and spending some time with the girls and some of the coaches as well and talking about yourself and uh, good luck um, in the next uh, part of this journey, uh, especially during this COVID. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. It's good to see everyone too. Thanks, uh, Jess. We'll take, take care. We'll thanks. speak soon. See ya. Okay. Thanks, Santa. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thanks.
things. Are we all leaving or are we got some more chat to do? Come on. 